Like so many of the post-war non-SCEDs, World Airways' future was uncertain. The early years of the airline were unstable, and it was doubtful the company would ever survive. But success would come to the pioneering airline, and its performance record would ultimately set industry standards for operating excellence. Incorporated March 29, 1948, World Airways was established by Benjamin Pepper and J. Stuart Robertson. Operating two of the company's seven ex-Pan Am and BOAC 314 flying boats, World began flying between New York and San Juan, transporting migrant workers home and new immigrants to the U.S. One of the flying boats World acquired was the Dixie Clipper, which had carried President Roosevelt to the Casablanca Conference with Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin in 1943. But by the end of 1948, World's only operating 314 had flown its last flight. The company was forced to suspend operations by early 1949. Later that year, World Airways would be revived by American Enterprises, its parent company. Taking advantage of the government's program of leasing war surplus aircraft, the company acquired two Curtis C-46 Commandos and reinstated the San Juan run. This fledgling airline was to change hands once again in 1950. A man named Edward J. Daly, who had successfully built one of the nation's first air freight forwarding companies, would buy World for $50,000. This was the man who would take this small charter operation and turn it into one of the most innovative airlines in aviation history and play a vital role in the shaping of the air charter industry. Operating out of LaGuardia and then Teterboro, Daly continued flying C-46s to service the commercial air movement program, the first of many military operations to come. But Daly set his sights on the West Coast and started passenger and cargo service between New York and California. By 1954, World consisted of 39 employees and its fleet included a DC-4 Skymaster, which was dedicated to passenger service. With the end of the Korean War, the military operations would be significantly reduced and profits would diminish. Daly was forced to sell the entire fleet of aircraft but he would ultimately buy them back. To service the defense early warning or dew line construction project above the Arctic Circle, World leased three C-46s for the military project until its own aircraft could be repurchased. Requiring a second aircraft to support its military operations, World leased an additional DC-4 to transport Hungarian refugees from Vienna to McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. Under contract with the Commission for European Migration, World flew a total of 14 such refugee flights across the Atlantic. 1956 was a hallmark year for the airline. World's headquarters moved to Oakland, California. That same year, World landed the Military Air Transport Service, or MATS contract, to provide daily inter-island service for troops in the West Pacific. This was also the year that World Airways would receive its first commercial contract for charter passenger and cargo service between Japan and the Philippines via Okinawa and Taiwan. Upgrading its aircraft to the long-range pressurized DC-6, World began service for Western Electric between Oakland, Honolulu, and the Marshall Islands. At one point, World was operating five DC-6s to serve the daily transcontinental flights to transport military personnel and materials as part of the Log Air program. As its military and commercial charter business increased, World expanded its fleet by three Super Constellations, or Connies, and three Starliners. By the end of 1962, World's fleet consisted of 11 DC-6s, seven Connies, and four Starliners. Primarily due to the Vietnam conflict and Nats, World's fleet expanded again in 1963. As the first U.S. charter airline to enter the jet age, World took delivery of three Boeing 707-373C convertible aircraft that year. It was the 707 that allowed World to conduct a series of record-setting flights, including the first non-stop commercial flight from Oakland to Tokyo and from Manila to San Francisco. World Airways had become one of the largest all-charter airlines in the world. In 1964, 
world was granted trans-pacific authority to fly commercial passenger charters between the u.s and asia and received the national safety council's award of honor for performance excellence the following year world received transatlantic authority to fly to europe and africa six new boeing 727s joined the world airways fleet in 1967 and were leased to several carriers as the five-year log air project came to a close world continued to expand its domestic and international commercial charter service by 1969 daily was operating the largest and most profitable u.s certified supplemental carrier and the company had grown to over 1300 employees during the economic downturn of the 1970s world airways was one of the few airlines which managed to make a profit However, the company did delay its ordering for the Boeing 747 and purchased DC-8s instead. By its 25th birthday, World Airways represented true prosperity. The company had a global sales network and operated the most advanced jet aircraft available. One of the company's most historic events was the opening of the World Air Center at Oakland International Airport. This 48-acre complex served as the company's headquarters and maintenance facility. With a hangar large enough to accommodate four Boeing 747s, this mega maintenance center served international and domestic carriers as well as the U.S. military. In 1973, World began flying the Hajj pilgrimage for Garuda, Indonesia and Air Algerie, transporting Muslims to and from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. The service became so successful that World eventually upgraded the aircraft from a DC-8 to a Boeing 747 and ultimately an MD-11. Another of the company's history-making events made headlines on March 29, 1975, when Ed Daly and crew flew the last flight out of Da Nang on a Boeing 727 overloaded with desperate refugees fleeing for their lives. CBS News correspondent Bruce Dunning was among the last of the Americans to leave Da Nang late this week but he went back aboard Bailey's plane today to witness what was supposed to have been a mission of mercy. Here is Dunning's exclusive film report on the tragic results. Reports from Saigon said thousands of people were roaming Da Nang airfield. But as the plane landed, this did not at first seem evident. But then people poured from behind buildings and revetments, racing on cars, jeeps, trucks, Hondas, and on foot. Unable to move on the blockaded runway, the plane raced down the taxiway swerving to avoid abandoned vehicles, perhaps even running over people. Daly also attempted to airlift 1,500 Vietnamese infants from war-torn South Vietnam and bring them to the United States in what would become known as the Baby Lift. As the first customer of the Boeing 747-200C convertible nose loader, World Airways introduced this version of the jumbo jet to the world, operating passenger and cargo charters around the globe. By 1979, the airline industry would be deregulated and World Airways would be operating scheduled passenger service, offering an unprecedented $99 one-way transcontinental fare. World championed deregulation and could now compete with the major carriers by marketing air transportation as an affordable means of travel instead of a luxury. Have you heard that George Burns is going around with a beautiful model? It's true. World Airways. That's what I call a model airline. Terrific menu, complimentary wine, and they'll treat you like a celebrity. That's the way they treat me. The fares, so low that most other airlines just don't match them. Next time fly World, the airline that's so good they named a whole planet after it. World Airways, for people who hate to waste money. In 1983, this service was expanded with the introduction of Ultra Service with DC-10s flying to Honolulu, London, and Frankfurt. However, the venture proved to be less than successful. Due to airfare wars with other airlines, the company suffered significant losses and ended scheduled service. It was to be the end of an era marked by union battles, labor cuts, and the closing of the once grand World Air Center. Due to his untimely death in 1984, Ed Daly would never see World Airways rise again to be an industry leader. In 1986, the world was introduced to a new and improved World Airways. The company focused its efforts on its still thriving military programs and charter operations. In 1987, 
World Airways established its headquarters in Herndon, Virginia to better serve its government clients. The company continued to be profitable partially due to its wet lease programs with such carriers as Cathay Pacific, Garuda Indonesia, and Malaysia Airlines. By 1992, the company set its sights on the future, acquiring the state-of-the-art MD-11 aircraft. This wide-body jet served the world's customers' needs for long-range flights, making it an attractive wet lease product, as well as fulfilling the military's need for global support. For a short time in 1996, World attempted scheduled service once again, and again it was to return to its core business when losses forced the company to close out scheduled passenger service. In 1996, World Airways upgraded to the MD-11ER extended range aircraft and continues to operate a fleet of four DC-10s, three MD-11 passenger, two MD-11 convertible freighters, one MD-11 freighter, and two MD-11ER aircraft at its 50th birthday. In celebrating the 50-year anniversary of one of the oldest air carriers in the world, World Airways is proud of its continuous support of America's humanitarian efforts around the globe. Frank, nearly 400 Vietnamese refugees today flew from Malaysia to Travis Air Force Base in California. They're the first of three plane loads of boat people due to arrive from Malaysia for resettlement across the United States. During the Vietnam conflict, World brought relief to U.S. soldiers through its Homecoming USA campaign, offering low fares to servicemen and women from Saigon to several points in the U.S. World transported food, clothing, and medical supplies to Nicaragua in 1989 as part of the Flight for Life program. In 1992, World Airways took part in the relief effort of Operation Restore Hope in Somalia, and was recognized for its outstanding performance in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait during Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Now in its 50th year, World Airways prides itself on its rich history and the contributions it has made to the aviation industry. World was built on the vision and determination of its dedicated professionals and has prevailed throughout the past five decades due to the continuous commitment of its employees. That same dedication will ensure that World Airways will continue to prevail as it prepares to meet the challenges of a new century. Today, the 50-year-old World Airways continues to aggressively market its extensive service capabilities to the growing number of air carriers around the world as a new era begins.